What should the Sixers do with Doc Rivers? Is he gone? We'll talk about that and more next on Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Hey, I want to give you guys an apology. This is Keith Pompey. I'm here on the solo tip, hopefully for the, the last day. But I got to apologize to the people on YouTube. I'm having some issues with my camera right about now. And, um, you know, I've been going back and forth saying, do I, should I do a podcast this morning? I don't have a camera. It's going to be crazy. This is the second time it happened. I'm getting upset the whole nine. But then I thought about it. And it's like, well, you know what? I apologize but I would feel bad if I didn't do a podcast. Now, today I'm on the solo tip again. Hopefully this is going to be the last day. We got a little schedule and conflict. So by tomorrow, my man D, Divine Givens, the co-host, the great Divine Givens is going to be back. And also, hopefully I'll have my camera back. I hopefully. Now, again, maybe it's better that you don't see me. Maybe I don't scare people, right? You know, things like that. But hey, look. Today, I want to talk to you guys about Doc Rivers, right? And there's a lot of things, as and, and then possibly what's, what's leading up for the Sixers in the future. But there's a lot of things going on here when we talk about Doc, right? Talk about his coaching, should he be fired, this and that. And it's one of those things where, I'm going to be honest with you, you know, yeah, I understand that there have been, there could have been some more adjustments made. But when we look at it, you say to yourself, well, who's the better option? Are there some better options out there? Now, some people might say, okay, Monty Williams. Go out there and get Mighty Williams. What about Budenholzer? Like um, Budenholzer, the coach who just got let go by the Milwaukee Bucks, right? So, you know, here today we're going to break that down and we're going to talk about Doc. We're going to talk about Doc. Like, is should Doc go, right? And do I think he'll go? You know, so we'll do that. Now, here's the thing. When you talk about Doc Rivers and you talk about his coaching job that he's done, you know, a lot of people look at it and they say, look, Doc needs to go because he doesn't make adjustments. Doc needs to go because he came in here and his, he was supposed to bring them a championship and he can't get out of the second round. Doc needs to go because look at his inabilities to get out of the second round wherever he was at. Like, look, he won a championship in 2008 with the Boston Celtics. He took them to the conference finals and to the championship. After that, the Boston Celtics. But since he's been with the Los Angeles Clippers and now the Sixers, it's the same old thing. Blowing series leads and this and that. I get that, right? I do. But right now, it's sometimes, do we always blame someone's history? Or, for instance, how should I say? So you get a guy who's been arrested several times and for doing crimes. And then all of a sudden, he's around and something happens. And then all of a sudden, meaning like a crime is, is uh, committed. And then all of a sudden, you say to yourself, you know what? He committed the crime. It's his reason that such and such happened, right? And so all of a sudden, but the guy had nothing to do with it, but he gets arrested because of his history. And then you say to yourself, hey, that's not fair. That's not fair. Well, if the Sixers would have won game seven, people would have been celebrating Doc Rivers for getting them out of the second round for the first time since 2001. Oh, the monkey is off his back, right? But since James Harden and Joel Embiid had poor games, everyone's like, oh, you got to fire the coach. Now, if James Harden and Joel Embiid would have made more shots, if the guys on the team would not have quit, then we would have been celebrating the coach. 
Now, effort, I get that. That's You can say that's on the coach. The guys, you can say the guys quit on the coach. You can say whatever, right? You can come up with any reason for their poor play that you that you have. You can do that, right? But to me, I don't think it's kind of fair when you factor in that James Harden struggled, Joel and B struggled. The guys were outscored 33 to 10, poor body language. I don't think that's the coach. I don't. When you look at this series, whenever James Harden had a great game, he shot 60%. James Harden shot 60-something percent in their three wins. When the Sixers struggled, James Harden shot 20%. So you mean to tell me you got a point guard, a guy who has the ball in his hands, the guy who's like the guy, the man, And we're going to basically say, okay, Doc, since he struggled, you're going to lose your job. So in this instance, I don't think that's fair. I don't. I get it. I understand all the other stuff that you guys might want to say about this and how the coach this, the coach that, all that. I I get all that. I get all that. But you mean to tell me? A coach would be celebrated for getting the team out of the second round if the point guard would have made more shots. But since the point guard struggled in certain games, the coach is the guy that's got to go, right? So, you know, that's the thing that gets me. Now, we'll talk about some other things like, you know, the relationship between the point guard and the, and the coach and how that could impact the decision-making, making, Right. Because that's also something huge that we got to look out for and pinpoint. I mean, I tell you, I I hate to be Josh Harris right about now and the owner of the 76ers. I I really do. But what we'll do is we'll talk about that and more when we get back from, you know, talking about my great people at game time. Right. You know, buying tickets for your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. Game time is fast and an easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guaranteed, you can stop stepping over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you had, right? Right? To me, game time, when I want to do stuff, I go and I say, hey, I want to go check out a concert. I want to go, go to it. I want to do all this other stuff. So I do that. I go and I get the lowest price guaranteed. And the only thing, the thing I really like is, you know, my schedule is crazy. They even have event cancellation uh, protection. So that's pretty good. So forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash, uh, flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Yes, I know we're saying 110%, but I'm being literal, right? Just listen to me. Just listen to me. So download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on media, MBA for $20 off your first purchase. Again, the new the code is locked on MBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and the, re- and the redeem code locked on MBA for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price is guaranteed. So here's the deal, right? So when we talk about this, Doc Rivers and uh, James Harden deal, you know, uh, some people might look at it and say, you know, James, the Sixers want James to come back. And, you know, as we put it, like, you know, it's weird. Um, On Sunday after the game, you asked Joel about Doc Rivers. And Joel's like, look, I like him. That's my coach. He talked about great things. You know, he, he was supportive of the coach. You asked 
James Harden about the coach, he was very non-committal. So you're like, whoa. Okay. Whoa. And then you hear the things on how, you know, it's just a little difference of opinions at times, like on how things should be done, you know, this and that. So the report comes out from Ramona Shub on ESPN that James is basically like, look, <laughs> if you want me, Doc got to go. One of those things, right? So here's the thing. I don't know if James, uh, F, James had a phenomenal year, regular season. Led the league in assists 10.7. First players, first sixer to do that since Wilt Chamber. You know, him and Joel Embiid had a dynamic duel. But the way he looked in game seven, the way he struggled, is one of those things you look at it and you say to yourself, I don't think they can win a championship with him. Because here's why. It's also one of those things where you look at James and you're looking at it just the way you look at Doc. And you say to yourself, hmm, Doc Rivers, his future, his past, his history. He's basically can't get a fair shake because of his past. Well, what's, what's James Harden's past? He crumbles in big games. He crumbles when, when series on the line in game sevens. He has the worst shooting percentage in game sevens. The worst. The NBA worst in game sevens. So now you got this guy who has the NBA worst in game seven report saying that, yo, it's me or Doc. Hmm. Now the goal is to get out of the second round. Now, you got a coach that can't get out of the second round, but you got a player who struggles when the game, when the series is not. So it's like, hmm, who do I pick? <laughs> it's multiple choice. A, B, C, C meaning neither one, right? I guess, I don't know. But the deal is like, I don't know if that has juice. Now, if James was balling, if he was doing everything, and he was phenomenal season and 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 da 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 and he didn't have this blunder at the end, then you look and you say, okay. But then also, like, again, who are the options? Who's gonna come in and take them? So I'm saying this to say, like, I get it, but I think that the timing is bad, like, for this to come out, like, yo, you shot three for eleven, bruh. Like, yo, you had more turnovers than field goal attempts, five to three. Yo, in the, I mean, they made field goals, five to three, five to three. More turnovers than made field goals. Yo, in the first half, you shot more air balls than, than made field goals, three to two. So, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. I, I I don't know, you know. I don't know. Like I don't know if you have that type of leverage. I don't. You now who knows if if so if it happens it happens, but it looks bad to me. It just looks bad because if it was Joel and B, okay, I get it. Franchise player, MVP, I get it. You know, I do. I do. I get it. You know, you, you, you say to yourself, like, this is what Joel wants, and we're going to try to do our best to accommodate him. He's our franchise player. He's about to – he has four years left on his deal, I mean, for $198 million. We're going to accommodate him. He's the MVP. He's the face of the team, one of the faces of the league. Okay, I get it. But then when you have a guy that struggles and struggled – even though he had some big games this series, but he struggled in game seven. And he's coming out with these demands. Uh, I don't know if you honor it. I'm sorry. I don't know if you honor it. You know, before we get back to the second break, I want to talk to y'all about prize picks, right? You know, tonight, you know, let's be real. I'm going to take 
LeBron James to score more than 26.5 points, right? I'm going to take Nikola Jokic mm. to have maybe more than 7.5 rebounds. Yeah, and I can get Jokic to get more than 6.5 assists, right? And, hmm, uh, let's see, Anthony Davis to have uh, less than two blocks. You know, when, when prize pick happens, you pick two to six players, and if they will go school more or less than the prize pick projections, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. There's no compete against other people. It's just you and the projections available, right? That's what makes it really good. Like, it's just you and the projections. Prize pick offers projections on any sport that you watch. That includes M- NBA, NFL, M- MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, college basketball, the whole nine, you know, everything, anything you can imagine. So download the prize pick app, go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive an instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, prize picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, prize pick will give you $50. Don't forget the end of the promo code locked on to sign up the instant deposit match up to $100, people. Don't forget. I'm telling you, don't forget to do that. So now here's the thing. You know, the big thing, the last thing I'm going to talk about, Doc, is there are some people, and it's funny, when people smell blood and when they know, like, there's a chance of you losing your job, everyone is critical. I mean, I've been getting so many memes and so many, like, commentary and people sending me of former players just destroying this guy, talking about how he can't go and how he can't coach, rather, and how, like, it's time to move on and people giving, bringing up, um, people are bringing up like past stuff. You know, it's tough, man, because where were these people when my man was excelling, right? I mean, of course, there's a lot of people that can be critical of someone when they struggle, right? saying how he needed to do a better job. We all get that. But, you know, if I'm Josh Harris, how much do you make this for Daryl Morey, for instance? How much do you make this um, a part of it? How much do you basically say, okay, well, it looks bad. Well, they're saying this. We got to do it. No, you can't really do that. Even if you want to get rid of the guy, your mind's made up. I mean, the moment that they lost a lot of people felt like doc is going his job is gone and it very well still may be that way but i'm here to tell you like it's one of those things where you look at it and you say to yourself like you know it's now is when people know that you're going to go down or you're going to lose or whatever that's when they all come out but when there's a chance that you got a chance to win some of them don't talk as much but I don't know. I just feel like, like again, I said, if if James would have made more shots, the Sixers would have done some other things. He would have done it. Now, that's not to say that Doc Rivers doesn't have his weakness. It's true. His in-game adjustments need to improve, right? I think one of the main things that killed the Sixers um, was his lack of trust in P.J. Tucker. I do. I mean, P.J. Tucker, you know, we all talk about how P.J. Tucker is this great locker room guy and P.J. Tucker is this leader and P.J. Tucker gets in Joel's face and Joel has the utmost respect for him. Well, in game seven, P.J. Tucker was the only guy who came to play in the first quarter. Take that back. Tobias Harris did too. Tobias did too. But P.J. Tucker had 11 points. He had three threes. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. And for the life of me, I don't understand why he, after the first quarter, he was basically a bystander. 
So those are certain things that Doc needs to work on. And again, it's one of those things where it was obvious that he doesn't trust PJ for big situations. But PJ grabs rebounds. He does all the other things. He's, he's a, a leader on the floor. You can't help the Sixers that way by being on the sidelines. You just can't. So we'll see. I mean, we, we will see. And again, y'all, I'm sorry about this. Not the video for the people who are in YouTube. Um, try to get things corrected. Uh, and um, hopefully you'll know, deal with the IT people. Uh, I was under the impression that it was something on this restream end, but um, now it's saying the camera isn't even working. But it was bizarre because the camera was working this morning. And then all of a sudden, it, it froze up on me, and then it went away. So um, we'll see. Try to get this back. Hopefully be back. Well, not hopefully. We're going to work it out with, with this scheduling conflict and get my man D on here. But what I wanted to do is, I, Divine Givens, I did not want to go without a podcast. We've done that several times before where we didn't have it. And, um, you know, right now is an important time. Maybe I'm helping you out. You, instead of seeing me, you see a big old KP on the thing. Um, I won't scare people, but uh, but yeah, this is what you do. Follow my man, Divine Givens, on Twitter at DivineG975. Right now, he's on the morning show this week on 97.5 FM radio, so you can listen to You can watch him from 6 to 10 a.m. You can follow me on Twitter at Pompey on Sixers. That's Pompey on Sixers. And what you do, what you can do is you can read my articles on the Inquirer.com, Philadelphia Inquirer. And what you do is you can get this podcast wherever you get your podcast. But for the people in the YouTube channel, when you go to Locked On 76 at YouTube, click on the Liberty Bell. When you do that, you become a, a new uh, subscriber, right? And in addition to that, you get notifications whenever we have our uh, new podcast out, right? So I want you all to do that today. So thank you for listening, and have a great, 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 great day. Peace.